So, welcome to The Interlocutor with me, Anthony, and Exogoru. Today, I am joined by the last Poets Gentleman. How are you? We're fine. Fine. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much for agreeing to talk to me today. We're going to kind of have a run through and, and look at some of these uh, questions that revolve around hip-hop, around masculinity. We're at the South Bank Centre. We're going to be talking later on in the Royal Festival Hall about very similar issues. So, to, to kind of start with, how would you, for people who aren't necessarily aware with what you do. How would you describe your work, your music, your poetry? How does it kind of fit to you? The Last Poets uh, um, reflect the actual pains and victories of a people in mm. America primarily. Um, we have uh, been for over 40 years now, been a voice of the so-called disenfranchise of the people who don't have a voice. Uh, we not only have become uh, a voice for our people, but we've also made statements that re resonate to people that aren't from America right. who seem to appreciate what we have to say because we're talking liberation talk. We're mm. talking about trying to free your soul, trying to free yourself from any kind of oppression. And there are, there are numbers, of, there are all kinds of oppressions that take place on this planet and any form of oppression is out of order as far as we're concerned. So our poetry has become very international, universal, primarily because of the fact that we have attacked the the systems that mm. be uh, from inside. Yeah. And, and uh, I think that that is the attraction that causes us to get this international attention. Right, and, and, and what would you say today with the state of rap music and hip-hop in general? How does that talk? Does it still talk to oppression in the no, same way that it did? No, uh, um, hip-hop today has, you know, I, there's a statement that I, I constantly say. I say, in the absence of a movement, the circus comes to town. Mm. And we are actually right now at the beginning of the threshold of another circus because of the circumstances have just taken place in America, but Donald Trump yeah. being elected as president, he's like Emmett the Clown. He's right. he's appearing, he's like the figurehead of uh, being in charge of a very powerful little baby country. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, uh, he's not my choice and he's not a lot of people's choices, but it is a reality that many of us have to face mm. because of who uh, and who he is and what the circumstances are that have incurred. And as far as just, you know, running into the situation of how, what this has to do with us as being men, we were all young men when all of us became last poets. And being last poets and dealing with some of the situations in our country and the world has kind of formed the type of men we are. Mm. You know? I was, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to kind of touch on that and just look at the ways in which, I guess, hip-hop and, and rap culture and lyricism and the poetry that is incorporated within that, how does that inform our attitudes of masculinity? Is it part of the same thing, or are they kind of disconnected? No, 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 no it's not part of the same thing, because when we were men, young men, we had a direction. Mm. That's the difference between us and hip-hop. We had a direction. We knew what we were there for. We were there to try to take some of the depression, some of the systematic um, disenfranchisement off of our people, not only off of our people, but off the whole country of America. So we had a very uh, impending, and I mean, a hell of a job as young men. So, you know, and finding our way through the, you know, the myriads of, you know, deceit and lies, we've had to learn a lot about ourselves as men. So, we, we, and we look back at some of the hip-hoppers and some of the so-called gangster rappers. Okay, we look at them as young men and black men who are trying to uphold the thing with, mm -hmm. the, with the words, but there's just a lot of things missing that we... Uh, we, we, we were part of yeah. it. We had to be a part of it. So if we think through. about the five elements, graffiti, breakdancing, DJ, and MC, and, and knowledge, how does, does knowledge does it still play an integral part? Lo lo knowledge plays an important part. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who do have knowledge, the latest being Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kendrick Lamar has not uh, forsaken the knowledge aspect. Yeah. There are quite a few people who have opted to be clowns and just give you party stuff and not interested in, in raising your level of consciousness. And then there are some people who 
Of course, KRS has always been one of the folks that we have given respect for at the yeah. top of the list. And um, and and but I, my issue with hip hop has been, and it's based on what Umar says. You know, we had direction. Many of these young men um, who have embraced hip hop don't have direction. So consequently, you have a directionless situation happening with their lyrics. And I, my issue with hip hop is that it's very sloppy. Yeah, it's not. The organizational aspect isn't there. What's the cause of that, would you say? Well, because they don't have a movement. There's right. nothing, there's no platform. How about with, with now with the Black Lives Matter movement? Do you think that this is going to kind of engender a new kind of hip-hop? So you, you asked a question about graffiti knowledge. Mm. The whole thing about, okay, graffiti is cool, but it's the knowledge of where you come from and who came before you. That's the most important thing. And that's the thing that we had to always and respect. And that's been lost. And that's been lost. And that's the thing we now still know and tell about who are some of our, you know, mentors or who yeah. some of us pushed us forward with their knowledge. So it's about, you know, learning or trying to understand who came before you, not thinking that you just said this is your yeah. thing and all you started all this because that's bullshit because the last poets didn't start anything. Yeah. That's been, oh man, you guys said, you know, the last poets are part of a generation, the slave, the slave on the ship started chanting and yeah. relating to one. And then when they did the field songs and the prison songs in the South, and then when they start playing the blues, so there's a whole thing of, 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 of speaking and communicating yeah. that, you know, we had to understand that they were before us. Yeah. There's an oral tradition this, right, that we you. have upheld. Thank you. And, and the fact is that in that oral tradition, um, we have tried to be true to it by telling the people truth that can help lift them up. So what's lost? This is what I'm interested in. I'm looking at what point did it kind of derail itself? Well, you, you know, when, when you... When they start making a lot of money. <clears throat> yes. Uh, money money is always that third party that seems to really cause issues. Yeah. And, and I think some of the producers of some of the hip-hop albums have suggested that maybe you should be more gangster. Maybe right. you should more nasty. Be, be nasty and say MF a little bit more. Yeah. And, and and let's make nigger the feature yeah. character. Uh, and so consequently, that's, that's become a, a major concern. So the commercialization of yes, hip hop has absolutely. played into it. And what, I mean, from my understanding, the early 90s played a big part in the ways in which gangster rap. I mean, if, if we were to unpack gangster rap and ask ourselves, what does that even mean? What is gangster rap? Yeah, but rap? the whole thing about <coughs> gangster rap, because even for gangster rap, rap was being pretty well <laughs> on its own. Because, yeah, like the women in rap, mm. you know, Queen Latifah, MC Light. I right. dug MC Light. Don't cream, but I really dug MC Light. Right, but here right. come these niggas on the West Coast with this West Coast thing, like, you know, fuck you bitches, we run this, we run this, yeah. we run this. And even that's when it really began to decrease too, because how you gonna deny women, I, I, I mean, when we're talking about trying to employ and, and bring everybody into the Big Ten, how you gonna come as a young start denying women, especially black women, mm. the right to speak? You know, I, I mean, that's going against the whole thing what you're talking about, yeah. you know, so, so, and then, you know, you had record companies, you know, who, you know, those executives said, well, we want you to be as many nasty niggas you can talk about your bitches and your yeah. hoes. That makes us money. You can't, because I do want to tell you, we've been on the road for the last 27 years. We've had rappers and young poets come, well, Mr. Mr. Uh, my man, I've owned good stuff. And I was writing good stuff, but they told me to write nasty stuff and talk mm -hmm. about bitches and hoes so they could sell the record. So yeah. these kids are um, totally without reference to the values that we all have as black people, yeah. but they opted for another thing because somebody waved dollar signs in front of them. So they would, they, for, all right, let me give you a classic example. I was um, actually sent out to California to chastise, and I didn't realize I was sent to chastise Ice Cube. And this is just before he went Holly Weird. I mean, I say Holly Weird because he's become an actor. But at that time, he was a rapper, and I think he had a, a rap record out talking about the ghetto bird, talking about that helicopter that would fly over the communities in L.A. and shine a big light onto the people, at, like, at middle of the night. They, they'd take helicopters and fly over Watts community and, and blast the lights into the house and just invade your privacy. And, and so he was exposing the system on a lot of levels. He was saying things to wake you up, but then all of a sudden, somebody came to him and said, listen, you know, you can be an actor, you can do this, and so forth. And anyway, the, before that happened, the, um, the New York Times actually sent me out to California to actually, and I didn't realize, they sent me out to chastise him for using the word bitch and using the word nigger so profusely. 
because they were thinking I'm from the old school and I represent a different tradition. But the fact is that bitch and nigga are relevant if they're used properly. Mm. And we agreed on more things in a little bit. And I can't spank him because he listened to us, but the interpretation of what they heard was a little different than what I would like for them to hear. Right. And that became an issue. But we didn't have any disagreements. We didn't have any conflict. And consequently, the article that was printed in 90, 1995 with Ice Cube and myself was a very harmonious article. And they were a little disappointed mm -hmm. that I didn't put out a paddle and beat him because right. he wasn't, I wasn't like acting like the big brother spanking the little boy for saying things he shouldn't say. Mm -hmm. So there was this, but they were, uh, the, the fact of the matter is that these kids have a need to express themselves. Right. And if you don't have a platform of expression that is embracing the political climate, then you're going to take whatever is available to you as long as somebody's offering you money and you're going to take the money and run. Yeah. I, 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 I kind of just want to move it forward and look at the ways in which hip hop informs black masculinity and to look at those kind of the dynamics between the two. Hip hop has become a reflection of America in, in many, many ways. Masculinity has taken a beating period. And it's primarily because white men in America have always been in question of their masculinity. They've always had issues. And, and unfortunately, if you're living with people with the deep insecurities, some of that stuff rubs off on you. And white men in general have not been comfortable being men. Mm. And that's the issue. Many of them have issues with their mother. Mm. And that's the problem. In the black race, we revere our mothers. You can go to a second grade classroom, and if you mention something bad about a little kid's mother, you can get punched in the mouth. Mm. Our mothers are important, and you respect your mother. You don't want to become your mother. But because America is a motherless country for the most part, they revere the, the, the men and not the women. Even in Christianity, we're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Is the, mo is the woman the Holy Ghost? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, mean, and, and see, when we talk about masculinity in America, we go back to Hollywood. Exactly. Because where do we get those forms of what a masculine man is in America? Exactly. I mean, you see James Cagney smashing women in the face with a, with a fucking grapefruit, like, bitch, shut up. You see Humphrey Bogart smacking hoes down, just like just knocking them down and kicking them. Then you see John Wayne dragging Maureen O'Hara through the mud and shit. <laughs> yes. You know, so these are just forms of manhood that we were supposed to be, you know, have a sort of, this is how you, and then see in the black community, we had the pimps and the course. So like manhood in America, how it came from or our forms, it's very distorted and twisted because yeah. we didn't have that many real good, you know, I mean, objects or, forms of manhood to yeah. show us. You know? so, how, so white men had all those forms of masculinity, and that's how they think you just beat a woman down, you push them, you fuck them, and you leave them. So, you know, we didn't have many pimps on when you fuck a whole boat, they said. Those so, are the role models. Those are the role well, models. Even in that, you know, the slavery time, there was there was no way gonna, the masculinity was going to be uh, ex, 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 right. uh, you know, uplifted. So any way possible to take away a man's masculinity was done by law. So you had no choice. And, you know, you get bumped in the butt or you get whatever was happening, whatever was going to break you down. Your, your children, your mother, your, 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 your lover gets taken out and being raped constantly and you can't do shit about it. I mean, How do you the, feel the, about that? I mean, and the thing about it is like, yes, and, you know, you can trace back to, I think the very first little children's cartoon that we saw on television was The Little Rascals. For a long time, I thought Farina was a girl. Farina's a boy. Mm. Farina's one, one of the kids, one of the characters. Here you got a little boy with barrettes in his hair named Farina. I have never met a man named Farina. I mean, that was a sincere. I mean, it was a very serious indictment. On, and then when I'm reading about slavery, like what Baba Tunde is talking about, on the slave ships, young boys were raped just like the women were raped. Right. I mean, to to dehumanize us and to feminize us has been a mission. And that mission hasn't changed. I mean, the truth of the matter is, Amer white America and many black Americans, unfortunately, they love to see Flip Wilson play 
Ger Geraldine and his little skit sure. about killer. They love that. So the idea of one thing that I've noticed as well, especially within America, is that there is this kind of a feminization of black men. In, yes. In, what are your thoughts on that? What you know, the, the idea that, that, that black men, from Martin Lawrence to Eddie Murphy, of them having to dress up well, as women? you know, that's one reason why I love Dave Chappelle. Because he, he will not today. do that. And Dave Chappelle said, fuck that, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to dress up no more around. And my, my, my young brothers is looking like I'm feminizing who I am or trying to be. No, he didn't do that, man. I appreciate it, Dave Chappelle. And See, I, because I, I those are the images that... We, yeah, but see, they go back to the money again. It's like, oh, they'll tell you, okay, well, it's just part of being an actor, and you can get away, but it's nothing harmful, and it's nothing, you know, disastrous about is that, it, but it, that's is the it, Is it money or is it integrity? The idea well, that that's what, what, that's what I'm talking about, integrity, because money destroys everybody. Right. Money will and, kill your integrity. Your integrity, mm -hmm. your, your, your sense of principles, your sense of money, when you, <clears throat> listen. If, if you put this way, the lack of money. Yeah, well, lack of money, when too. You that's have true. No that's money. true. You yeah. have no job, and here's a job that's offered to you. What are you going to do? Yeah. See, because, you know, you, I, I, mean, I see, as an, as an there's something you, you're looking for real deep answers to, to these questions. It's not that I, deep. Because I, I see that you, I don't know if it's you or the station that's asking for these questions or how the masculinity, but it's, I mean, it's quite clear. I mean, it's quite clear to look out and see what is happening to our men. I mean, the whole thing about them walking around with their pants down on their ass and thinking of something cool and there's something, you know, I mean, bravado about that. Ain't nothing bravado that because that means back, well, everybody knows what it means. You know what it means back in the prison. When you did that, means you were somebody's hoe. That's right. But then again, they are somebody's hoe. They are the hoes of the system to the violence and to the ignorance and to the stupidity that they take themselves to and the young families to and, and, and the community to. So, yeah, man, it's just... It's, I mean, and I know you being a young coming up out of this, you know, environment, this generation, I know it still bothers you a whole lot because you're wondering when this shit go in and how do we end this shit and mm. how and, do we... And, and it's maximized by your fashion designers. I mean, I remember just recently buying some stuff to, to bring here to make sure I was warm enough over here in Europe at this time of year, and I bought a sweatsuit, and I had to take the pants back because it was skinny pants. Yeah. And I don't wear no skinny pants. Yeah. I mean... Can, can, can I ask you a question? Please. What do you think it's going to take to take the whole sense of uh, the, the, the a black man or the, the development of black manhood, I mean, to get it yeah, out of the place, general. you know? To get, get into a, to get into a form where it's more respectable, where men are more respectable, where they know how to respect women more? I think, I think for me it's a socioeconomic issue. That, that, that's kind yeah, of how okay. I see it. Well, that's it, what we, well, we're on the same page. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go um, ahead. So you get a lot of disenfranchised groups, a lot of marginalized communities, and, and often within that, it will create a certain set of conditions or it will breed a certain culture. One of the things that we're very focused on is looking at culture as if it's a homogenous thing. It's not a homogenous thing. There are independent and intersectional elements within uh, within people's culture. So I think that to understand the nuances and the intricacies within that is very important to moving the position forward. The yes. thing that I'm interested in uh, when, when it comes to hip hop and masculinity is that if you listen to rap lyrics now, to mainstream rap lyrics, they sound deeply conservative uh, and, and right wing politically, you know, in the sense of how they treat women, how they treat uh, people who are of a different sexual preference right. and orientation. This is something that I wonder, is this, a, is this a reflection of American, of wider American culture, or is it something indicative to hip-hop and the way that young African-American males is perceive it, the white world? Mm. Mm. So, uh, yeah, no, this is a reflection of America. These, these young men and women are simply a mirror of what America has become, and they maximize that image in many, many ways. America is really... You know, we talk about it being racist, we talk about a whole bunch of things, but it's a very immature country, man. Mm. Do you mean culturally, politically? Immature, in every in aspect. Every way, right. And it's a child. Right. It's an underdeveloped human being. I guess it's one, it's young, it was founded on genocide, it's founded on very capitalist principles. And so I think they are these still things. groping, they're still crawling, not mm. walking. Yeah. You know, you know, the statement you, you, you did, your mother, the statement you made just makes me reflect back to just uh, Kanye West about a couple of days ago 
when he told everybody he would have supported Trump and black people stopped, you know, worrying about racism so much. See, because Kanye has been allowed to get away with a lot of shit and do a lot of things because he knows how to be quite controversial. He knows how to pick the sides when he wants to pick the side when he wants to be on. He can be very left wing when he wants to, mm -hmm. and he can be very conservative when mm -hmm. he wants to. So, and that's becomes part. But, but, but <laughs> See, you, you, do you know, you know, just just sticking with 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 Kanye West and, and mm -hmm. what he does. The, I mean, you have rappers like Immortal Technique, right? And and who, who are regarded as quote unquote conscious rappers. Yeah. And this right. is, this term itself is quite problematic, as it, as opposed to what's been unconscious. <laughs> if, you look at, if you look at the mainstream yeah. um, and what comes out of a very sterile, very formulaic mm -hmm. form of music, so. Is there something within that that I guess wider American culture and in the UK too we're afraid of? We're afraid of people talking uh, progressive, socialist, actually pro lyrics that contain a certain level of profundity and poetry. <clears throat> I mean, there, there is definitely a fear. There's no doubt about it that that we will be liberated and that we won't be your favorite uh, uh, nigger toy. I mean, yes, there's a problem that black people will wake up and recognize that they're giants and not midgets. And, and rap, you see, since we have this platform of rap, we could use this to elevate ourselves in tremendous ways. The Last Poets are an example of what the, work, the power of the word can be. Mm -hmm. Because, and we were about trying to clean house. We were trying to actually stop the nigger behavior and develop the black manhood. Our whole thing was geared, geared towards developing black manhood in every possible way. And then you get hip hop. Hip hop actually reversed that trend because of producers, because of what Bapatunde and Umar said. They put money in the game and said, no, it's cool to be like this. It's all right to be like that. Don't go along with what those last poets are talking it about. It, was a, it, was a, it created a war between the East and the West. West Coast. Yeah. It created it did. a war. It was right. So they could sell records yeah. and then dominate the mind of the, of the masses. You have a lot of people who, you know, they're not, they're not, they're in a situation where the school system is fucked up, so their their mental capacity to understand certain type of uh, ideology yeah. in poetic terms is not, it's not, they can't right. get it. I mean, yeah. a classic example, Umar, and I wasn't, partic I didn't participate in it, but the last poets were in a movie right. with Tupac, and it was called Poetic Justice. It was so. Okay unjust. Yeah, yeah. It was ridiculous. And I even had a chance to talk to Tupac and say, what was the movie about? I said, I don't know, I just got paid. Yeah. And and the movie was an embarrassment. Yeah. So to be to be that money orientated to, to the point where you're taking you're taking roles and positions and you're putting yourself out there purely for the financial benefit of something in itself is saying I guess the American work ethic or the American principle, you know, it's that very Calvinist, that very 15th, 16th century way of working and practicing where your principles and your ideas and your beliefs but you're saying, you're saying take American, a backseat. It's world, it's global. Hmm. You put it on America, yeah. it's, in, it's in Europe, it's in, it's in England, I guess it's so. in, it's I, in I, Asia. I guess it's a it's lot more concentrated because you, you have America, I, we see it because it's so vast. It's well, like America has Hollywood, so they can Absolutely. produce stuff up in front of your face yeah. and they can make movies about it that's yeah. the only reason but America is no is not by itself yeah, yeah no it's, it's def for all the capitalist countries and the, and the industrial countries I think it, it's true to say however in America it's so concentrated you know the, the average American works 12 to 13 hours a day so if you look at the work ethic there and the way in which money is valued and, and for what it can buy you as opposed to the poor and the rich dichotomy you kind of see where we're getting at because America is such an extreme country too we're extreme Americans don't have a sense of how to deal with the moderation or something because just like when it's like, <laughs> no they don't they don't know how to deal we do have problems dealing with uh, moderation because we're either this or we're that so we, we get stuck up and hung up on something just like you said about the young kids what you know form of um uh, politic, uh, political ideology is following now with the rap because now it's about conservatives in America. And so, and everybody who wants to keep their position by making that money will start going into the conservative. Because, you know, when Kanye made that statement, I said, this motherfucker's getting stuck now. He's going to go along with where the other thing is going along so he can get along. You understand? Because he wants to still keep making money. He doesn't want to be known as a rapper who's trying to bring something down or who's trying to you know, charge any motherfucking problems with America. Because, see, but see, the thing, don't think about this. This fucking election, this election was not about black people. It was not about Hispanics. It wasn't about gays or 
uh, 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 gen, um, LBG people. This was about poor white trash going up against their more established brothers mm -hmm. who have been fucking them for ages. And they began to see now through all of this stuff, but, the, you know, these these these, these these trade deals is taking jobs out of them, and 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 then the trade unionists are trying to they get into the side where we're gonna go with Trump because they found the jobs are not coming back. Big business runs America yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. The big business runs this. They want prostitution. They want pornography. Has they want drugs. Has, has big business ever not run America? Thank you. Mm. Thank you. No, it's you know always been. Thank you. That's that's that's, that's, that's and so so everybody's trying to form their little their little inroads into big business now into the to to, to the favoritism of big business so they can keep remaining their positions where they want to be at. It's really getting, it's really stupid and sad, but it's not going to work, though. It's not, because it, it's such easy, it's so, it's so evil. And see, because when these, see, because when they poor, the women white people have been put themselves in, when they've been put into a position called poor white trash now, because I grew up with all these people in the Midwest, the ones that, oh, we just, and most of them, the, the worst, you, you know, you can even call them stupid, you can call them dumb, but when you call them poor white trash, yeah. that really... Yeah, gets yeah. to the effect. And then to see Hillary Clinton, who should have been poor by trash, because she was from the Hillbilly family and, and what you call them, but Clinton making yeah. all that money. And these are four to be people, four to be black guys, and they become the least. Now, when you get a million dollars yeah. to write, do the speech, do a fucking speech for a million dollars, who, who, I mean, this is between the elite and the poor white trash. Yeah, yeah. But you know what's also very interesting? But I mean, we'll move on, but just to kind of round up the, on, on the idea of the election and, and Trump is that 49% of the American electorate didn't vote. So, you know, when people say uh, America wants this, America wants a very small percentage of America actually wants. And this is, and if you look at, you know, Hillary on paper, she won. She won she the won popular the vote. vote. Exactly. So oh, by over two million votes. Exactly. So you have to look at the way that the system is set up. The system is not designed for. It's not a democratic. The, system. It's not a democratic system. I mean, we, it's a fraudulent system. Trump from, said it himself in yeah, 2010. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did. And, 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 he did. and he said it for everybody he to did. think that he was going to get jilted when, in yeah. fact, he was. You. He was. It he was did. very yeah. slick. Mm. But then, see, Trump mm. is a. He's a con man. Tr he's a con artist. Yes, he is. And the truth of the matter is. Is, you know, we're talking about manhood and, and, and all this stuff about hip hop. Trump is the original nigga. He's a classic nigga. He knows how to play the game. And that's what he reckon that's yeah. what he represents. There is no black person who can out nigga Trump. Yeah. He he doesn't he doesn't play the kind of the politics, I guess, that people are, are used to. That, no. I think he's an anti intellectual. He he's, is a nigga politician. He, he's focused on Corruption. He's focused he, on scandal. Uh, he's, he's focused interested. on Trump. Mm, right. He's a businessman. Yes. Not a politician. No. Are they the same thing? Come Did on. I, <laughs> Come on. I mean, on. It, listen. America has been a hoe for quite some time, and he is a super pimp. Mm. Because you see, my first thing when I know he was born I mean, he just kept talking about the, I won't come back, and we're gonna renegotiate these trade these trade agreements. I don't like these trade agreements because if he's able when he does start start going back to renegotiate, he gonna get the most of it for him. Exactly. Yeah, the American people ain't gonna get no benefit because he's this is what he wants. Yeah. I'm at the head of business. I can get the first shit. I can get first dibs yeah, yeah, of this yeah. shit now. You know, and that's his business kind of. These white people, when they find out who well, this motherfucker really is. Brexit. This is the same thing that we. No, are they changed their minds. When people they? find out what, what happened, means, happened right. it's going. Thank you. This thank you. This, this, is, be this is the problem: is that when you give people the right to vote, but not, not the, the right, right information, you thank have a big you. problem. Thank you. And this boy. is kind of what's happening. You right see, there. you see. Now we're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Was on yeah. the same page. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I I want to ask you what your thoughts are on the use of the N-word. This is something that causes a lot of oh, well, we controversy can, we in, the, in, in the UK Nobody particularly. Nobody talk the N-word like the last But I guess for us, you guys, to get your, your kind of take on, should it be used, shouldn't it Go be ahead, used? Uh, the word, the N-word, you know, and I'm so sick and tired of people saying the N-word. Nigger, N-I-G-G-E-R. And some no, as they say, it's they say N I G G A. -G -A they want it to be, <laughs> and and even you got some hip hop artists who want to rationalize and say, oh, back in Kemet there was a term, a nigga, and it meant royalty. There may have been a sound that is similar because we repeat sounds for generations mm. in many ways. Mm. There may have been a sound, but the fact is that we know what the definition of that term is, 
And yes, the last poets, we blew that word up bigger than anybody because we knew there was an element in our community that was stopping us from having the unity and the power that we were seeking. We were dealing with a black power movement. And in order for that movement to take place, we had to work together. We had to organize as black people. Having a nigger was having a germ in your situation that was going to cause your your movement to not be successful. So we called that person who was not helping the situation a nigger. And we said, niggers are on together. We said, die nigger. We said, run up, nigger. nigger. We said, wake up nigger. We said, you niggers are scared of revolution. In other words, you're afraid to bring about a change. You're so used to being a slave until you'll die to being a slave and be happy being a slave. So the truth of the matter is that word has become, but now what happened is hip hop heard that. All the hip-hop artists, and they listen to us. They listen to us religiously because we were the only people running off of the mouth that they could listen to on the record. And they took that word and ran with it. So you got a whole world now that has endorsed the word. You can go to Italy and hear the kids calling each other nigga, nigga, nigga. You can go to Asia and hearing the Chinese kids Chinese calling each other nigga. And do you, you can think, go to and, Chinatown and, and New do York and hear that. Do you think that that's when, when you have non-black people using the word freely, is that a problem? Oh, by Schultz's father. Because I'm, that's a nasty, right, dirty is, word. You know, in hip-hop, it's all become, everybody becomes so hip-hop. It becomes multicultural. So a lot of times people use that word within that community and it's okay mm. among each other because we are hip-hop. And this has been happening. But, and, and you got to recognize... The, rec uh, the Zulu Nation. Mm. And, Zulu recognize, and, and, and recognize what it is. Nigga has become a rebel. The nigga has become a character who is rebellious against everything. The nigga can't be controlled. You can't put him in a box. He's gonna be rude. Mm. He's gonna he's gonna be outside the box. But you see the context in which you you use the word. How many people in mainstream society, again, non-black people, people that aren't as conscious or as tuned in to these uh, issues as what you might think. How many of them actually understand? They don't. What it is they don't. Saying? They don't. They don't. This is the problem: is that the people that aren't being persecuted under that category are using the word freely. You know, I must told during I think I told him about thirty years ago. I'm going to stop doing the history of revolution. Because it's no longer political now. It's, it's, it's people just getting into the poem and hearing these cute little things about fucking back and they're laughing and having fun. Because he, I don't care what nobody said. Nigger is not a good word to use. You know, and I try to keep it as much as possible out of my vocabulary. It's a dirty, I don't give a fuck who glamorizes or who's uh, trying to transform it and twist it into something okay. It's a dirty, nasty word, man. And we got killed because we people could call us niggas. We got lynched and raped. So, cause, you know, they made it easy. Okay, oh, fuck that nigga. He's a nigga. Kill him. Oh, that she's a nigga, bitch. Rape her. So it's not a nasty, it's not a nice word to mm -hmm. use. I guess that's what the issue is. And that's, the, that's the, the thing that is most contentious, is that you have people that don't fully understand the history of the word and what it means. And, it's, and they're and, gullible. Yeah, right. And, but, and they still swallow it and they yes, still they spout it and they still chant Kanye yes. West. Yeah. You know yes. what was interesting about Glastonbury is that when Kanye West did Glastonbury, you had him saying the n-word and then you had 60,000 white folk saying it back to him that was quite an interesting kind of dynamic to look at and then you get into the discussion who should not be saying it you know the white folk should just not say it or should it be taken out from ain't songs that and musical ain't, ain't together that deep? that's the thing that's how deep that's got ain't that deep man that is, that's deep. You know? But then how many of those white folks understand Damn, they don't. that's the point? They don't, man. Yeah. And I think that's what... It's a nasty word to dehumanize a people, mm. and it is not to be used, but we have used it. And, you know, black people have the ability, and it's, it's a genius, but also it's a curse, to take shit and turn it into meatloaf. Right. And so we can make niggas sound very nice in black conversations. Man, that nigga is that's a bad nigga. Mm. And all of us are still fighting. There's a lot of us still fighting to try to, 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 to get it out of our system, but it's been there for so long, mm. and it's, we start incorporating it into our system so long that it's really a hard battle for something, the first thing you want to say. It's like Doom said, you see a nice, bad brother, or you say, oh, that nigga's bad, man. You don't say, oh, boy, that boy got some skills, but, uh, no, or he's, you know. You can take that word out of your vocabulary. I don't use it. You know, I mean, we do perform with it, but we don't, we don't, you know, that's not something mm. that has I mean, to Richard Pryor, everyone knows what, you know, with his U-turn when he went to Africa, came back and refused to say 
Yeah. She used to say the word. But you know, there's a little comedian now who just propagates it. Uh, what's the name of the little short guy? Kevin he, Hart. Uh, uh, not Kevin. The other cat. Um, cat, cat Williams. Cat, cat Williams. Williams. Oh, he just tells, he yeah. even tried to show how you how, tell you how to say the word yeah. nigga. I think with comedy, it, co comedy has its own self deprecating element that we have to have another podcast. Yeah, that's, to kind a, of that's, that's, that's right. That's, that's right a big, you're right about that. Right about that. Um, the last yeah. thing that I just wanted to touch on before we concluded here was what is it, what is masculinity to you, gentlemen? Masculinity to me mm. is understanding that. Each man is made of 23 X chromosomes and 23 Y chromosomes. So that means that half of me is a female. Mm. And that doesn't mean I'm supposed to go to Victoria's Secret to buy my, my, my clothes. It means I'm supposed to have sensitivity. I'm supposed to have compassion. I'm supposed to be able to understand the female energy that gave birth to me Matter of fact, when it's my birthday, it's really not my birthday. It's my Earth Day, and it's my mother's birthday. And we need to recognize that we have a lot of convoluted definitions about what's going on with our lives from mm -hmm. the very beginning. Every time that, that I have a birthday, it's my mother's birthday. It's my Earth Day. So women are not getting the play they deserve because men have a lot of insecurity about themselves. White men, and they pass it on to black men, and we have mirrored it, and we've spouted it, and we have said the same damn thing that they've said, and we have destroyed the very essence of who we are. Being a man is recognizing that we have that female energy in us so that we'll understand it and protect it with our lives and treat it with sacred reverence. And that is not happening. You know, even deeper than that, where he just ran down. I have a sister who's a nurse, and she's a good nurse. She's, I mean, got awards throughout this Connecticut. My sister knows all the chemicals. She knows all the drugs. So, you know, when I first started living, I was always calling somebody a faggot. All that faggot. She said, you know, stop. She threw me out the house one time. Get the fuck out of my house. You know, and so she was mad. I mean, so when she said, let me come back. So I said, why you throw me out for saying a fact? She said, let me tell you something. At 10 months, all of us are amorphous. We don't know who the fuck we are. So some of us might get a little more progesterone that we used to get, and some of us might get a little more test, but, uh, test testosterone than we get. And that happens to men and women. So, so you don't know shit. All the other motherfuckers out there who are telling you no, she don't know nothing. This is all about a natural thing. So you just leave that alone. Don't be calling nobody no homo, no fags up at my house, yeah. unless you know what's going on This there. is what, what you know? I mean, one of the things that we'll talk about later on when we hit the big stage out there tonight is, is the intersectional elements of oppression and how oppressed groups of people then project that oppression onto oh, no, other no, no, oppressed no. groups of people. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that's yeah. something that is is really important to kind of moving these kind of conversations forward. Because I'm, I've known, like, when I, like I said, when I was in the street, I was a little boy. You know who looked out for me more than anybody? It wasn't the heterosexuals. It was the homosexuals because the heterosexuals were all trying to find little ways to play with me or say so. I know one time I was in this one bar, I was shining shoes, and this motherfucker kept feeling on me as I'm shining shoes and kept feeling on me. And this bull, what well, we call them bull daggers, then these were women, some of them call them daggers. Daggers but, 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 yeah. but these bull daggers, these girls, but this, this girl, this woman kept seeing him feeling on me and putting his hands on me. So she just pulled out a razor. She said, motherfucker, next time you put your hand on that boy, you ain't bringing it back. So. <laughs> <laughs> understood what she said. But it wasn't so much, you know, oh, okay, oh, oh, all the widows and crap, the homos. It was a lot of the, the heterosexual men that were trying to, you know, get me to come in the car. Man, you know, you got fucked up people. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my name. You got fucked up people everywhere, man. So, and you got to watch what you're saying and who you're dealing with. Because like I, like I tell everybody, I, I've learned that through all the people who are gays, whatever you are, black, white, there's one strain that runs through all of us. All of us just want to be loved, respected, and appreciated. And that's, that's a all beautiful that, note you know? to end this conversation on. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for taking the time to talk to me, and hope, I'm looking forward to tonight's show yeah, as well. Right. Thank, thank you, you very too, much. man. Cool. Thank, thank you, you for coming much. and being Jane. who you were, Thank too, you okay? Much. Nice one. Yeah. Thank you.